There's a lot of work to do and, well, it doesn't do it all by itself, unfortunately. But I am back and I am not really rested, but ready to go. So we are going to take a look at a CPU cooler. So we recently got to look at the CMT 210 case from FSP. They also sent me the Windale 6, which is a CPU cooler. Now, if you guys saw my case review, you know I think they did awesome. Will they live up to that reputation with the CPU cooler? We'll find out. But as always, I want to give my quick shout out to Epic Gear. Of course, they uh, sponsored my channel, helped me, helped gear me out a little bit. Um, I definitely want to mention them and help them out because I really like what they're offering to the market, really like some of the innovation they have. So check them out. I'll have links in the description below. Let's go ahead, take a look at this install process, then we'll go through our testing results, and then we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Okay guys, so in an ever and an, a never ending attempt to make everything <laughs> run a little smoother, I am going to try to lump some stuff up and be a little quicker. So for starters, FSP's cooling unit here is pretty big. I mean, it's pretty massive. Lots of fins and everything. And then on top of that, we are using a direct heat pipe contact. So yeah. I don't know if I'm all that, I mean, I don't know if direct heat pipe is really that huge of a benefit because Noctua doesn't really do that. So, and they seem to always do just fine. So I'm not sure that it really makes a huge difference one way or another. So really it's not gonna matter to me one way or another. On the install process, you're pretty much gonna need, you know, some sort of Phillips screwdriver. Of course, I've got a second one here and that's kind of a nice long handled, ridiculous thing to try to help out with reaching around that cooler a little bit. And you're going to need some kind of scissors or clippers. So yeah, keep that in mind as we go through it. So for starters, FSP includes their own bracket here. So it's for both Intel and AMD. There's a little notch on the inside that is the side that's going to be facing out from the back of the motherboard. And so what you do is, is you'll have some of these longer uh, bolts right here. And then of course you go out to the corresponding hole. In this case, we got AM4. So it's gonna kind of go out and it's gonna sink into that little, little notch so that the, the bolt won't twist. So once you get the four bolts in there, you put this whole thing through the motherboard and then where it gets kind of fun. So once you get everything there like that, there's a there's a, these little nuts that uh, go in to help secure the back plate to the motherboard. And they've got a hollow spot and then more of a flat spot. So if you put that flat spot towards the top and then screw it down till you hit the motherboard, it'll kind of help you save a little time on screwing them all in and they'll get down there a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick this into the actual motherboard and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so I definitely recommend trying to, if you have like a little bit wider holes there than these screws, definitely angle this as close to this edge to the back of your motherboard as you can. Because as you'll see here in a little bit, there's not exactly a ton of room for clearance on this cooler. So yeah, once you so you just cinch all four of those little screws down and you're good to go. So after that, there's these brackets. They've got AMD written clearly right there on the on the bottom. So all you're gonna do is line it up to the hole. You're gonna make sure that this little edge that's on the top is away from the CPU. So you, as you can see, there's my CPU socket. And so in both cases, this bracket is falling away from the CPU. So then FSP has these little guys and they're just some little, little nuts that screw right in on top of the bracket. And that holds your whole bracket assembly together so that it's really easy. Well, hopefully as easy as possible. Here, wake up, wake up, yeah. Let's see if I can get that focus to readjust. There we go. So that way it's as easy as possible to get that tower cooler sitting on to that, that chip. So, alrighty, we will continue on 
after I get those rest of those bolts. Okay, so I've already done this install once, which is why I kind of have a clue what's going on, but landing this giant heat sink in there is actually gonna be just ever so slightly difficult. So they've got a bracket here that, that cinches down on it, and it's got two little divots that are kind of gonna match up to two little divots down in the, into the base there. So you kind of have to just balance this thing on there and just kind of have it hold in place. And then you have to try to get the screws to land in those little tiny holes. So I'm gonna drop the screws down into the bracket first, cause yeah, really hard to reach in there. Sometimes I really feel like I need a good magnetic screwdriver. So then, um, yeah, I feel like you're just kind of doing the best you can to like kind of eyeball it right on in there. So what you could also do, and this is what I'm going to try to do very gently, because the problem is, is if you push on the screw too much, you'll knock your bracket off and that's a pain. But... If you don't line it up properly, you won't get the screw into the hole. So there we go, wake it back up. And so yeah, once you get that in there, you just tighten those screws down until it's nice and snug. And yeah, not too bad. Now this is a giant cooler, barely clearing the second ram stick. And if you turn this cooler this way, which you can't do on an AMD socket, anyway, AM3 or AM4, the way the brackets work, you're gonna have to orient the cooler this way. So if you turn it the other way for, for say an Intel, you will cover probably a good two of your RAM slots instead of just the one. So you pretty much wanna probably face it pointing up no matter what. All right, let me go ahead and finish tightening this thing down and then we'll get to the fan. All right, let's talk about how this fan installs. So I've got the fan right here. And as you can see, there's these nice little rubber fan mounts that are in here that I put in there already. So the way that actually works is you get a nice long rubber mount like this. And so you gotta make sure you have your orientation right, but you pop this guy through the hole and then you make sure you have that little tip and you're just gonna pull the whole thing through. So that part's pretty easy. The problem is, is once you pull that through, then what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to clip the end pair of pliers, which, you know, or scissors. I have, you know, obviously some, some wire cutter type things. So once you get that thing cut off, that, that gets you your nice little tip there. Then the problem comes is that you have to reach down and get those things to come up into these little mounting holes and then push the top ones down. Obviously the top ones being much easier than the bottom ones. You can't really do that beforehand because you need to be able to see that screw to screw it down. So it's a little bit of a trick, but I can get it in there, but we will go ahead and do that off screen so it doesn't kill too much time. Okay, so there we go. We have a finished install, but but, 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 I need to mention a couple of details about this um, because I ran into some interesting issues. Um, some, turns out it's just mostly me, uh, but some of it is just things that you do need to watch out when you're installing, and I wanna point them out now. First things first though, you can, uh, so you notice I've got this, I really have to angle up my camera to get up to where we can see this LED fan, and, and that's kind of a bummer. So one of the things that FSP's done is they've offset the center of this cooler from the install bracket. So like the pipes are shorter on this side than they are on this side. And that is so that you will have better clearance for your RAM slots over here. Well, there's gonna be a couple problems with that. For one, if you have a higher end like Threadripper or X, what is, what is Intel up to now, like 299, 399, one of those kind of sockets, enthusiast level or professional level type type equipment, you're going to have RAM slots on both sides. So you're going to probably have more clearance issues on one side than you, well, this side than you would this side. You can turn this so that it blows straight out the back on Intel socket, but you can't do that on AMD. You're stuck with this up and down airflow. So there's something to keep in mind. 
Um, the blue LED on that fan looks fantastic. I do really like the glow there. It's a nice solid color. I really love the black design and it, it does look great. But you do need to be careful when you're cinching this down. So this thing, this whole install bracket didn't have any springs or anything to help kind of ease into tension. When I first installed this cooler, I must have done something off. I don't know if it was just that the cooler kind of broke in, like the bracket mounting system, or if I got my, you know, when I mentioned during the install that there's those two little notches that have to slip into the grooves that are down in, in the bottom there. If I got those off, I might have pushed down a little too much pressure. And so my board wouldn't come on. I went through a crazy amount of troubleshooting and I found out it was just me. There was no damage, nothing permanent, everything was good. But once I got through that all, I just realized that you need to be really careful and make sure, just make sure that those, those little notches are in place. I also recommend do not tighten this down all the way. Go ahead, just ease the screws up in the mounting on both sides until they're like barely touching the bracket. And then just slowly tighten both sides down. And once it feels kind of snug, just stop. Turn your computer on, check your temperatures, see how everything's going. If it feels like maybe it's not enough pressure, you might need a little more tension, go ahead and tighten them down a little bit more because obviously tension helps with heat transfer in the case of CPU coolers. So keep that in mind. Definitely not the greatest install process I've ever done. I wouldn't say the worst either. It's, it's just what it is. So let's go ahead, get on to some testing results now and kind of try to sum up what's going on with FSP on the cooling level. So before I go into the testing results that I actually got, I do need to point out just some weird anom anomalies. Now I already mentioned in the install how I had the whole boot issue and my computer wouldn't come on and it looked like I had over, like probably misplaced the bracket or, or just, just something really minor, but just something that I'm still not 100% sure I could never reduplicate the issue. And you know what, that happens. You get anomalies like that, so not a big deal. What I could reduplicate though, was I could not get my stress test to complete. So normally, I run OCCT, I, draw, I, I have it go for about 10 minutes, and then after that I take my average from the following 20 minutes on a stress run to see where my cooler lines up. That way I know I'm you know, doing a fairly good job of heat saturating it without having to take too terribly much time and get a really good beat on what the long-term performance is on a unit. I could not get that run to work for the life of me. As I tried down clocking and run, at first I thought, okay, you know, my, my initial overclock on my Ryzen 7 with, with, with a liquid cooler, I was pushing, what was it? About 1.3. 4, 2 to 1.45 V core. I was running four gigs in all cores. Well, just to drop it down to like 1.3, 1, 3.9 gigahertz, it, you know, dropped the V core to like 1.35. So I thought, okay, that's no problem. Temperatures will be really good to compare. Still failed the test. When I finally just gave up and said, well, am I gonna fail stock? Throw it in stock and I don't have a problem. And so first off, I learned a valuable lesson about Ryzen. Ryzen does not like high temperatures because even though it doesn't look like it's done any damage to the chip or my board because I was able to go back and forth and, and things would work just fine again. But even though that was the case, if the temperatures get too high on that eight core chip, then you just get errors and it's just really easy to air out, which would explain why AMD has kept their clock speeds and their temperature you know, recommendations pretty low. And considering the newness of the 14NM manufacturing from Global Foundries, not a surprise really. In the end, I ended up going stock. And you know what? With that direct heat pipe contact, I was able to get about a 55 degree temperature and I was using a pretty extreme, I was using an extreme LLC just to kind of see how those temperatures would turn out, just to make sure that there was some extra headroom. After a while, I just didn't have enough time to really keep trying to figure out where it goes and I'm just gonna need more time with Ryzen if I'm gonna continue to use them as my test bench. But an eight core chip with a large die, it's gonna affect 
this cooler a little bit more than say an Intel chip that has a smaller die and not as many cores. One thing I really liked about the, Win the Windale is you can feel the temperature coming all the way to the top of the heat pipes. I mean, the entire unit feels warm when I'm under, when I'm under, when I'm under load on the processor. So it makes me feel like those heat pipes are working really well, but the heat pipes are separated just enough that a lot of thermal paste kind of gets squeezed between them. And I'm just gonna have to call it and say, especially with some of these bigger dies that we're seeing on the Ryzen chips, Threadripper being even larger, I'm going to say that direct heat pipe contact may start losing some ground because it's going to have a hard time actually making good contact to the whole die without thermal paste squeezing up through some of the cracks a little bit, a little too much. Overall, not bad on the temperatures. I did some comparison online and I still think temperature wise, this guy is doing really good since, you know, my comparisons are still a little fresh, a little new, especially since I really want to use my 1800X for all of my cooler reviews, but I'm gonna to have to revamp that a little bit as time goes on. Noise level, 45 decibels on, on, on my phone, and I think that's great. That's like just barely at the edge of audible and kind of like what I consider my comfortable noise level. Very silent sounding fan, no obnoxious whine, no obnoxious buzzing or anything like that. Really good on the noise levels, so yeah. Overall, I think they've got a solid performing unit. I might still consider steering away from them for AMD systems, but if you're running an Intel system, probably gonna work out really well. Let's try to wrap this thing up. First, install process. I think it's a bit of a bear. I mean, it's not the worst that I've ever seen, but there's just some key components to the install process I'd really like to see changed up a little bit. And so, that is not my favorite, and I just would love to see that get improved. But once we get past the install process, we've got performance, and performance was really solid. Now, yeah, there was some hitches that I ran into personally, but you know what? Every reviewer is gonna have their hitches every now and again. I did some online comparison just to make sure that I had a pretty good grasp on what I expected from this though, and yes, I think the performance is extremely solid. I don't see the Windale completely blowing away other similar air coolers, but I do think it's gonna hang right in there. I really like the feel of the entire unit getting heat saturated while under load. That is nice, which gives me a good strong indication it's performing very well doing what it needs to do. Even though I'm not a fan of the direct heat pipe contact as much anymore, I kind of see these bigger dies allowing too much thermal paste to kind of float through the cracks. Still, if the, the unit's performing well, then it's not that big of an issue. Where this unit really shines is aesthetically. This is a gorgeous looking unit. In order to find six heat pipe units that are in a reasonable price, a lot of times you have to compromise on having just the base aluminum colored fins, and you're gonna see that brass looking color of the heat pipes poking out the top. Yeah, it's not the worst look in the world, but it looks unfinished. With this nice black coating on the entire unit, it just looks fantastic. It looks very professional. It looks like it belongs in your build. The blue LED on the fan is great. And as far as the fan is concerned, the noise is fantastic. That is one thing that FSP has clearly put up to a high standard for themselves, is having a really good quality fan in there. I really like the fan, the looks, and the sound of it. At $53 on Amazon, that might be a little bit high in the price, but it's still what I would call reasonable. I checked a look, I took a look at some comments, and it seems like this unit has fluctuated in price quite a bit already, and it's pretty easy to catch on sale. So you, I wouldn't even know that you would have to expect to pay $53. But $53 is pretty competitive, and if it's selling for that much, I think it's because people are buying it for that much. It's a solid cooler. I would love to see that install process improved, but overall, it's a pretty great product. So I'm gonna give it a pure overclock, great hardware award. So yeah, let me know what you think of the Windale 6. Let me know what you think of my review. Like and subscribe and help me keep going. And I will catch you next time.